And next up this week is Miracle at St. Anna, uh, directed by Spike Lee. And as typical with a Spike Lee movie, it's really just a soapbox movie. But yeah. it's, it's too many soup, soapboxes. Uh, he, he's preaching about too many things so that the, the, really the plot of the movie and the characters all become drowned in it. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's set in uh, Italy in World War II, the 92nd Infantry Division, uh, which was the only uh, black infantry division in Europe, it is sent to capture a town and they're overwhelmed by German forces. A small group of them are cut off and uh, left to fend for themselves in an in a Italian town. But it, you know, there's so many subplots going on and, and really so many extraneous scenes. There's more scenes in this movie that don't do anything for the yeah. plot than, than are that, that do further the story. So that, you know, by the time the movie's all over, you, you kind of wonder even what it was about. And you know, I don't, Spike Lee, I just, maybe his, his strength is not in more movies. No, and you know, there was, you know, I, I think if this movie would have been a lot more condensed, it would have been a more enjoyable film. But this, I mean, it, it wasn't concerned so much as telling a good story as it was telling uh, Lee's point of view. Um, you know, he, he's upset, and he, you know, this has been in uh, the news lately, he was upset at Clint Eastwood for Sands of Iwo Jima that uh, didn't have any uh, African-American soldiers in it. So apparently he wanted to make flags one... Of, flags of Our Fathers. Flags of Our Fathers. Yeah. That's, <laughs> Sands of Iwo Jima was John Wayne. Um, he's probably upset about that, too. <laughs> no, I'm not sure he probably was. Um, but so he wanted to tell a story from their point of view, which, you know, it, it's a good story to tell, but it, it really loses focus of the, the actual events and it gets bogged down in, uh, you know, the things that are happening in this village with them and the, the different things that are happening, you know, interpersonally between them and what uh, the female lead uh, kind of love interest between two of the characters. Yeah, well, and that in particular didn't really go anywhere, and it sort of created a sense of conflict between uh, two of the cut-off soldiers that, you know, didn't need to exist. And really, I mean, the movie could easily have been an hour short. Yeah. And that's not to say that, the, you know, these, story, these soldiers' stories shouldn't be told. It should. And, you know, it's an unfortunate uh, uh, footnote to history that you know, black soldiers who did want to fight weren't allowed to. Yeah. And, I mean, that's an important story that should be told, but, I, you know, I don't get the sense that uh, Lee wants to move on from that. He just wants to continually poke at the, the sore spot in the past. I think there is an interesting movie to be made about the Buffalo Soldiers that, that just wasn't this one. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, it, it really needed a, a series of rewrites, I think, and a much more diligent editor. Yeah, uh, much tighter editing. Yeah. Uh, as it stands, it's unfortunate but I, uh, that the movie turned out as it did, but I say skip it. I'd agree. And we'll be right back with our next review.